All right, so I want to continue down this information session because a lot of members provided a lot of great information and this just isn't me, the perfect coach, telling you what to do and it's unattainable because you're thinking, well, this guy has it all together. So I've polled the members and I've asked them, how are they successful or where have they failed in the past and what have they done to become successful? And so the answers that I've got from part two of this video is, you should not be hard on yourself if you can't do everything. Is that you need to meal prep lunches for the week on a Sunday. Look at your fitness journey as a long-term goal. Now, number one is that you should not be hard on yourself if you cannot do everything. For me, the main thing is effort. But if you give up, then yes, I believe that you failed. And if you give up on something that you know is important to you and you know that you need to do it, then yes, I believe that is a failure. But if you fail, you always have the opportunity to get back up. The number one thing I would tell you is that if you do fail and give up, you can give up for a second. But then the next second, you need to get right back on it. Whether it's a mindset shift or whether it's a thing that you need to implement right away, either way, you need to do something right away because we're all going to fail at some point in time, but it's up to us to never move back to never get stuck, but always move forward. The second thing that becomes successful for most belly burners is that they meal prep lunches for the week on a Sunday. And I would tell you to keep it simple. You don't have to create this gourmet meal. If you want a gourmet meal that is macro friendly, then you can go and ask Jessica to make you her meals. But otherwise, keep it super simple. So for me, when Mary didn't cook, I would always batch cook my proteins. So I would just take a thing of extra lean ground beef, literally just throw it in the frying pan, cook it up. I would take a bunch of chicken breasts, I would just cut them up and I would throw that into the oven. I would take a thing of ribs and I would put that into the slow cooker and get that going. I would go do work, whatever it is around the house, 20 minutes later, this stuff is ready to go, right? Obviously the ground beef, you gotta stir it up and this and that. I'd go and check on to stir it up. Yes, 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 yes. But either way, I had three different yummy protein sources ready to go for me for the entire week. And if you do this, at least you have your main course. Because when we get hungry and we go into the fridge and we're like, oh, I'm so hungry, it's been such a long day. And we open up the fridge and we're looking inside and we see those yummy carbs, right? It's too easy to eat yummy carbs because they don't require much preparation. And if you have your proteins ready to go, and if you're smart, like me, where I just keep everything simple and just have bagged salads or you know a bunch of vegetables cut up, like even one of those vegetable platters, at least it's there and ready for you to go where you can just reheat that protein, grab your vegetables, pair it up, have some EAAs, and boom, you're gonna be lean and mean. And number three, and I think that this is one of the most important things, is that you need to see your fitness journey as a long-term goal. You gotta see what you're doing as an investment. And the thing about today's day and age, we all say that kids are, are inactive now, that there's, you know, kids don't play outside, and that's fine, because now things are being more organized. So back in the day, we would put our money in different things, but now we need to put our money and invest in ourselves because we are the number one investment. So if you have to pay to play so that you pay attention to your health and fitness, then don't look at it as an expense because we have expenses. If we look at our credit card, you know how much are we spending on Amazon on things that we don't actually need? We take those expenses and we apply them to our health and fitness and that's an investment. Always improve 1% better Look at this as a long-term vision. This is something that you're gonna do for the rest of your life. It's something that you actually enjoy. And honestly, if you were to work out for 10 years versus like, never mind one year. If you worked out for 10 years and you haven't worked out for the past 10 years, think about what that's done for you. So if you stopped working out today and you said, you know what, I'm just gonna quit. I'm too busy. I don't have the money. I don't have the time, whatever. And then you just stop working out. Well, think about what the past 10 years did to you. How did it make you feel? What point did it get to you by not working out? Now imagine if you did the opposite of that, right? Like we are getting older and there's no reason why we have to get old. You can actually reverse your body age. 
And all you have to do is be consistent for a longer term. So invest in yourself long term. So to recap, number one, don't be so hard on yourself if you cannot do everything. If you fail, you get right back up. Number two, set yourself up for nutrition success by batch cooking your proteins and then pairing with simple vegetables. And number three, invest in yourself, not just now, not just later, but forever. See this as a long-term goal. Now what I wanna do is gift you a healthy boost habit giveaway. It's in the description. Look up for the Fit Club, five days of healthy habits. Try and swap one out every single day and put it in the comments. Let me know how it was.